This video will demonstrate using NIFScope to create some very basic collisions for Fallout 4 from scratch. This workflow should also work for Skyrim, but as I only have Fallout 4 set up to demo this, we're going to be using that. This workflow will require that you have NIFScope Dev 8 or later build and the updated NIF XML that I posted on Discord. This adds the Fallout 4 material types and collision layers. There are links in the description below, so you don't have to be in the server to get it. I'll assume you have a NIF file ready to go. This should be a file that's already functional in game without the collision. This way you know that if this game starts crashing once you add the collision, that it's something to do with that and not something else to do with the file. Now there's two basic examples that I'm going to show here. The first will be using the built-in convex shape creator that's part of NIFScope. The second will be using NIFScope's import object file as a collision feature. First, let's make sure we have our uh, NIF set up to use collisions. We'll go ahead and get it open. I have a nice little alarm clock here. As we can see, that there is no collisions or anything like that. Uh, this should be a file that's like right out of Blender or maybe right out of uh, Outfit Studio or created in some other basic way. So you have a functional file. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is add the BSX flags node. We can do that by right clicking on a root, go to block, insert, pick Bethesda, get our big list and find BSX flags. And this will add the node, and it should automatically give it the name BSX. First, we're going to go ahead and change our flags. We're going to need to give it Havoc, Dynamic, and Articulate it. Now we need to get it actually in our node tree. So we click our first uh, parent node here, or the root node. And we're going to come down to the extra uh, num extra data list. Double click that, and we're going to add one to it. So whatever it is, add one. If it's zero, make it one. If it's one, make it two. Next, you're going to click the little refresh icon. And that should give us a list that we can expand here. We're going to double click on the empty entry. And we're going to enter the ID number that's next to the BSX flags. So in this case, it's number one. We should see BSX show up down here. At this point, um, yeah, it should be up underneath our uh, original root node because it was outside before. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this because I'm going to be using the same file as uh, the basis for both of the demos. Now, for really simple shapes that are convex in nature and don't have large extruded appendages like chairs and legs or something, uh, we can just simply right click on our shape and go down to Havoc and create a convex shape. Uh, it'll ask you to fill in some parameters here. You may need to play with this to get the the, the layout exactly how you want. Uh, in some testing, we found that the default values uh, creation kit in the game will give it like a little extra bubble outside uh, what it shows. Uh, so we found that reducing the numbers down to 0 0.15 uh, or even 0 0.1 uh, gave us a, a good a collision mesh that once the bubbles added mostly form fitted to the shape uh, it tells us that it created a hole it's fine and if we look at it we can see that the vertices are uh, inside our shape so that way once the bubbles added it, it kind of form fits it uh, at this point we can then change our material i'm going to make this uh, metal Uh, nothing else in here really of any use. Uh, if we needed this to be a stationary object, such as like a chair uh, where it would be placed down and you don't want it moving if you bump into it, uh, or a desk or something like that, uh, you're going to come to the rigid body, come down to rigid body info, expand that, and you're going to scroll down to mass. Uh, increase the mass to some high number. Uh, I use like 120 for most of the stationary objects. Uh, I think anything under 60 will be movable. So if you bump into it, it'll go flying. And then anything above 60, I think it's 60, um, it is going to be stationary. I just use 120 or higher. That way I know I'm, I'm covered there. In this case, since this is going to be something I want to be able to pick up and move around, I'm going to leave it the mass one. We're fine there. 
Uh, for convex collisions, we're pretty much done. So before we're ready to save, we need to go up to spells, sanitize, and reorder blocks. You can also find that by right-clicking in the empty area of the viewport. Go to sanitize, reorder blocks. If you don't do this step, when you run Elric to compile the collisions, it will crash. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and save this as a new file. We'll call this demo clock uh, convex. Just so that we don't get confused about which one's which. Now for some shapes, the convex hull may not be the most appropriate. Uh, so we could use something that's similar to um, uh, the mesh itself. So we'll go ahead and reopen our uh, basic starting point. We have the clock. I'm going to go ahead and select our clock. And we're going to go to export to OBJ. Uh, it's telling us that we didn't pick an old style mesh, so it's going to do the whole scene. That's fine. Uh, demo clock is fine name. And then we're going to simply click on a root node and then import it as collision. So it's going to put it in the root of the file. Yes, we know that. That's what we want. Pick our just export a file, and we can instantly see the red outline of our collision. Now, there's a little bit of work that we need to do uh, because it doesn't import correctly. Uh, so the first thing I do is I like to expand all the nodes so I can see what I'm working with. If you have a file that has lots of shapes and stuff in there, then you might want to do them one by one rather than doing an expand all. Either way, uh, we need to go into the collision object node first, and we're going to set our target, uh, which in this case should be our root. So we know that this is going to be zero uh, because that is our root node up here. And now we should see that here, and it'll add it in down at the bottom of our list underneath the collision object. Next, if we need to change any of the rigid body settings, like the mass, we can go in there, expand our rigid body info, come down, change our mass if we need to. Uh, we can also change the collision layer if we did need to be static for some reason. And that's all fine. Next, we need to make some changes to the knee tri strips shape. Um, this is where we would set our material, which again, I'm going to go with uh, metal. And this is very important. When it imports, it incorrectly gives us two strips of data, even though it's only using one filter. If we expand the strips data, uh, we can see that it has a none value as the first one, and then our actual strips is the second one. The first thing we need to do is move that up, which we can simply just copy the number so it has two of them, and then change our list to one. Then we hit our little green refresh button, now it just shows one, and we're good to go there. At this point, we then go into our sanitize, reorder our blocks, and then save our file. Okay, so now uh, Elric time. We'll go ahead and close this out. And I got Elric right here, so we'll go ahead and open that up. We're going to convert. Uh, we'll do the convex one first. As long as we get a nice little green box, that means that it thinks it converted everything good. So we'll go ahead and do the object import one. And we got green for both, so we should be good to go. Close that out. Now it put those in the process folder. I'm going to copy both of those over here to my meshes. And get this, this. Now I conveniently had an object window open uh, to the misc item. I'm just going to drop both of these in there. And I'm going to go into uh, QA smoke. And we'll just drop them here on the ground. So we got the convex one. And then we got the object import. 
And we're going to come in and actually give it a name. So we'll go convex. Imported. This is just so we could differentiate them in game. And we'll go ahead and save this plugin. Call this video test. And get into the game. So we'll hot load the plugin and then COC to our QA smoke. And here we are. We got the convex one. If I come over here, see that? If I run into it, and I have the imported one. Can also run into that. Pick it up. Now there's no icon because I didn't uh, give it one. I'm gonna drop it. And I can actually bump them into each other. And now we have functional collision.